anybody ever been discouraged? Raise your hand if you've been discouraged at home, on Facebook. I want you to share like crazy because there are a lot of people, turn me up, Andy, um, that get overwhelmed, just overwhelmed, feel like, man, I just don't have the strength to go on because you can have a supernatural attack of negativity to try to actually just kind of disorient you and makes you go down a path that you really don't want to go down. So I want to kind of teach you some things tonight that will engage and re-engage your courage. First of all, I think a lot of discouragement comes because of its little cousin, fear. It has a little cousin named fear. Now, fear is false evidence appearing real. Shout that with me everywhere. False evidence appearing real. So it's not real, but it feels real. Anybody ever had a dream that was so real? You woke up and you're like, ah, ah, ah. you're just panicking, thinking that you fought something or ran for somewhere. Raise your hand if you've had that kind of panic attack. Anybody ever thought you were eating a marshmallow and you were swallowing your pillow? Come on, raise your hand. Okay? So, all right, you thought you were in the bathroom. Who's going with me right now? Right? So, so you get discouraged because it's a simulated fear simulated. It's not real. It's like a flight simulator. It's very real. It feels real, but it's not real. So I want to talk to you about being successful, about going to the next level. And I want to help you harness the power of being discouraged. First of all, discouragement actually comes to everyone, but I believe it also comes to people that have great things to do for Jesus, that have great things to do for the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible said, see to it that your heart's not troubled because he knew that the enemy and the enemy would hook up with all those insecurities. You're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too short, you're too tall, you're too black, you're too white. Like the devil never went to anybody and said, you're absolutely perfect for God to use. <laughs> he just doesn't do that. He is the master discourager. I, I think the most powerful probably tool that he has in his toolbox is he's got a hammer and says, hey, here's the hammer. Hit yourself over the head over and over and over again and discourage yourself. So it's one thing to have a, a, a negative habit, but it's another thing to actually just be helped by the enemy. And so you have to take control of that. You know, the Bible said, take no thought saying. Anybody ever had a thought and then you said it? Anybody ever had a thought and wish you hadn't have said it? Yes. This is going to help your marriage. Try that one more time. I just say what I'm thinking. Well, you really ought to think before you say it. Because what you said wasn't a really good idea. So the Holy Spirit wants you to look at words that will engage positive things in your life or will engage negative things in your life. Story in the Bible a guy, about a guy named Moses. And Moses was supposed to go strike the rock. Remember that story in the Bible? And so he was supposed to take the rod, strike the rock. The people of God needed water and water would flow out of the rock. It was a miracle. It really happened. This is a true story. And he struck the rock. But then he started leading the church and had multi-site and multi-state and multi-problems and co, as I say COVID, but one of our pastors on the stage, uh, he's kind of a redneck. He says COVID. And I kind of like the way it sounds. It's COVID. And so uh, you got COVID problems and you got lockdown problems and then you got the Green New Deal. So everybody that's watching tonight in Texas is only doing it through a generator because we got rid of coal and we thought it was a great idea to have big windmills, but then they froze up and we got to wait till it unthaws. So come on, somebody ought to have it right now. So we had some really smart people doing some really stupid stuff. Can I get an amen today? And you might not believe somewhere in Texas, there's somebody with a little generator going, honey, would we die from carbon monoxide if we slept in the garage with a car? And the answer is yes. Use your gas card, get in a car and drive to Florida. It is hot down here. And our governor is great. I like Governor Santos. Why did I go political? I don't know why I did, but I just did. So, so now Moses is striking the rock and the provision comes. And it's just a great time in his life. Then he has all this stuff happen. Then God tells him, hey, the next time you go, don't strike the rock, speak to the rock. See what I'm saying? So he said, same situation, but last time you hit it with the arm of flesh, but this time I want you to speak to it out of your mouth. 
But then stuff happened. COVID, 2020, government shutdown, lockdown, virus, shots, and no shots, and should have had my shots, and I'm safe because I had my shots. All right, I've already had the first strand, so I'm probably not contagious, so I could probably take it. Well, I wonder if you had the third strand. I don't know. And so everybody's walking around, ah, and they're striking things because now they're discouraged. So God said, Mo, don't hit it the second time because this time you're supposed to speak to the rock. But then he just got mad. He just got discouraged. He got overwhelmed. His mind started playing tricks on him. And then when he got to the rock, he did the same thing that brought water out the last time. And so God did reveal the miracle and brought it, but he never got to fulfill his destiny because he didn't do what biblical prophecy wanted him to do. Because you have to remember that everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of that which is in the New Testament. So God said, hey, Jesus is going to die for you and he will be struck, but he will only be struck one time. The second time it will not be necessary. But Mo got all messed. Somebody ought to help me right now. Mo got all messed up in the head and he started operating the way he used to operate instead of operating in the new way. And he messed up the typology and that Jesus really needed to happen for us to have the whole plan. So God is proven here that God doesn't always get what he wants. He said, well, God always gets what he wants. God can make anybody do what he wants. Well, then why he can't he make you tithe? <laughs> why can't he make you stop overeating? Come on, I'm just going for you. If you don't say amen, I'm heading for your mom. Come on, somebody help me. Okay. <laughs> so what, what happened is too much negativity and too much work and too much aggravation, your adrenal glands just kind of shut down. You have a body. Raise your hand and look at your, if you got a body, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're like me and you got more body than you actually want to have right now. <laughs> Nicole's raised her hand. She's so skinny. She has to jump around in the shower to get wet. <laughs> so, it's like, <laughs> she's, yeah, anyway, anyway, anyway. every time I see her walking around, you see her ribs and I'm like, man, I haven't had a McRib in a while. <laughs> okay. Thank God. Let's pray God brings back the McRib. God, please, God. God, bring back the McRib. <clears throat> I don't even know where I went right now, but I'm just thinking about the barbecue stuff. So let's just go there for a second. Anybody ever had the McRib? Raise your hand. Have you ever stuck your hands on it and the barbecue sauce gets all in there? And you might have, I don't, you might have just petted a puppy, but you're like, ah, ah, it's good. Come on, raise your hand if you've done that. And what about McDonald's fries? Anybody ever went there? Anybody ever put a whole bag, maybe opened up the bag, ripped open the bag, put multiple fries in it, and just squirted a ton of ketchup in it? Go with me. I want to see who's with me on this. God, forgive me. I'm heading back to my sermon. Help me, God. Help me. Help me stay where I need to stay. So, so let's think about it. So we have all these external problems that cause Mo to start doing bad stuff. Then he had the internal issues of Man, the pressure is great. The scripture in the Bible says that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So I t what, how, do you, how do you get stronger strength? Well, one of the things you do is you do what you do right now. You just went to church. And I systematically just made you laugh about a rib. And I made you laugh about Nicole's rib. And I said, I haven't seen a rib in a while. Why was I doing all that stuff? So I could poke at you and go, <laughs> and then poke you again. And you ha, 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 ha. Why do I get so happy when he preaches and poke you again? Ha, ha, ha. Because joy brings strength. And without joy and the joy of the Lord, you have no strength. Stop being so serious about what's going on and stop striking the problem and start speaking to the problem and say, I'm coming out strong. I'm coming out blessed. I'm coming out delivered. I am more than a conqueror to him that loved me and gave himself for me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the devil will run from your whole neighborhood. Oh, I'm preaching so hot. I believe I'm melting snow in St. Louis right now. I'm not going to go check it for myself, but let me know. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So here, here's something I want you to write down. The harvest that you're receiving of negativity right now might be the seeds that have germinated in your life that are bringing in a bumper crop. Your physical body. I asked you if you had more body than you wanted. You said yes. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, I like your body, actually. <laughs> Don't do that. I was just checking to see who. <laughs> <laughs> you're 
your body. But your body can only take so much. Have you ever been under pressure so long that you're like, (gasps) you're hyperventilating, you're kind of overwhelmed? What's going on? I cut this little hand here, and I don't know how I did it. Somehow I, I messed it up. Yesterday, I moved on something, and it cut up. It cut up. I just took a little napkin and put it on there, but it's healing back, which is really cool. Isn't it awesome how God can heal you? Like, yeah. How many like me in your hands, you would have a, you'd have to cut them off by now with all the damage you've done to them. Yeah. Like, you can jack these bad boys up. If these were gloves, we would have to throw them away. <laughs> but God just keeps growing it. Go with me on this yeah. right now. But because that's damaged, it's sensitive. It's touchy. It can bleed very easy. Why are you bleeding on everybody all the time? Because you got hurt and and you got a lot of disappointments and you got a lot of problems that are coming at you. Uh, And to go back to the agricultural terms right now, I'm talking about germinating a harvest. Some of you are receiving a bumper crop because you keep planting negative seeds going, I just can't take one more day of this. I just don't know if one more thing happens to me, I want to lose my mind. And the devil tells his demons, all we got to do is do one more thing. Let's just tell him we're not bringing the McRib back. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I just can't handle it. No, 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 no. You need to start saying stuff that confuses the heck out of hell. Like... Man, I tell you what, I'm believing God that the next five years is going to be so full of grace and favor that I'm going to forget all about the stuff that happened in 2020. In fact, I read in Isaiah 54 when it says, you will not even seriously remember the reproach of your widowhood. You will not consider being barren because you will have so many offspring, you can't even remember what it was like not to be having birth after birth after breakthrough after breakthrough because you're declaring and speaking not what is happening to this nation, but what is happening in us as a nation. We come from a kingdom where our father is the king. And that ought to make you excited in the middle of the night and early in the morning. You ought to get up and say, ah! And the devil ought to say, oh, crap, he's awake again. Come on, give God praise today. I know there's a lot of people home right now running around the coffee table, hitting your knee on the coffee table. Some of you got distracted and ran in and got some ice cream just to say, I'm ready to party. (laughs) And that's okay. Now, I want you to understand that cultural cultures are built intentionally. My family culture, we talked about it this weekend with my beautiful family, and we talked about some of our family cultures. I have a staff culture. We have... A culture as a church. We have a culture. But there can be a culture in your life that you've allowed to happen in your organization or your life that basically you've invested negative thought after negative thought after negative thought, and now you're receiving waves of harvest of negativity. So we didn't get into this overnight, and we're not going to get out of this overnight, but speaking of overnight... I want to talk about the nighttime. You can Google it. I'm not sure where it's at, but in the Bible it says, weeping may endure for a night, but I like an educated church. Everybody shout, joy comes in the morning. So, So weeping may endure for a night, but then by morning time, we better get on with it. How long you been sad? I've been sad for two years. That's too long. I've been sad for a month, too long. Weeping may endure. So God gives us a time frame. He said, it's not good for your soul, your adrenal glands, to stay sad and mad real long. You can stay sad and mad for a night. But in the morning, you better put on the garments for praise for the spirit. This is old school. Of heaviness, lift up your voice to God. Pray in the spirit and with understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. This is an old song and the Catholics are like. (laughs) So we got a time frame here. Because if you stay under a long period of pressure, it'll mess with your culture. And all of a sudden now you will live discouraged, aggravated, and you will do what Moses did. And you will be striking stuff you ought to just talk to. 
because you're so mad. I don't know how many meetings I did yesterday, but there were, if, uh, there were too many. <laughs> and then I did a bunch more today, and there were just too many. There's a certain seasons in your life, and we're there right now, where when an organization goes from 200 people to 2,000 people, the database crashes and the staff crashes, and it goes from 2,000 people to 4,000 people, and it's all like mud again, and it goes from five to 6,000 people to 10,000 people, it gets crazy and jacked up. And just even in St. Louis, if you think about it right now, it costs about $15,000 when it snows, because we got football fields with a parking lot. So one of the reasons why I start striking stuff when I see snow is nobody's coming to church, and we're salting everything and tracing everything, and everybody getting overtime, and my God, I never want to go back. Whoa, who brought this snow off? The people are like, why are you in a bad mood? I'm going to go deeper for one minute. For those of you that don't understand, you don't understand that. You ever been on vacation with your kids? You went to Disney World, and you paid $9 for a, a hot dog, $20 for a soda, $50 for Mickey Mouse ears, $10,000 to get in, and then you're standing in the hot line for three hours to write, it's a small world after all, it's a small world after all. Anybody ever been there? And it's 900 degrees, and you've waited for three days, and your kids have been griping, and they look at you and ask a question, and you say, shut up, and they go, why is dad? such a bad move <laughs> because I don't want to be here I'd rather be at the DMV <laughs> come on go with me right now a lot of booze here Will you guys work at the DMV <laughs> which by the way that's another reason why I love Florida when you buy a car you pay the taxes at the dealership and they give you a license plate in St. Louis you buy a car you stand in line at the DMV for 19,000 hours don't even make me go there for a minute <laughs> Am I helping anybody right now? Raise your hand if I'm helping. This is how you control your mind. This is why church is so important. God gave us the rule book. He gave us the guide. And he said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So as you get older, sometimes you can just get mad all the time. You just wake up and go, I'm mad about something today. What are you mad about? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Coffee's too hot. Coffee's too cold. Need coffee. And that's the reason why God cap the age on people having kids. Okay, like kid, people need to have kids when they're in their 20s. Can I get an amen right now? You ain't got no business having kids when you're 50 years old. You're like, mini golf, been there, done that, you don't need to go. He's like, I really want to play mini golf. Screw it, you don't need to. You know, I'm just, am I telling the truth right now? Old people say amen. This is why God gives you grandkids so you can love them and they think you're awesome and you kiss them. And then when I'm done, I'm done. He just crapped his pants. Here he is. I'm done with him. Come on, help me right now. Somebody else say amen. <laughs> Some of you are 20. You're like, I don't know what he's talking about. I say, wait on the Lord and you will know why. You don't want none of this. No, you don't. So what I'm going to say, right? I'm saying that you have to understand the time and the season. When Moses didn't understand the time and the season, he struck instead of speaking. So here's what you have to do. You got to get some joy back in your life. Turn off Fox News. Well, I'm Fox. I'm going to O-I-N or O-A-N or whatever the heck it is. I'm going to Newsmax. I'm going to CNN. Listen, turn off the news. You can't, they've razor wired their self in and they've, I don't even want to go there. I do want to go there, but I don't want to go there. And it's just like, we don't need to go there. Let's go here and say, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'll tell you what I think. And I'll tell you what, everybody's got an opinion. It's like everybody has a microphone and everybody has something or nothing to say. And so now it's stirring up strife and everybody's striking each other. And we're going to get water out of this rock if we speak to it and say, you know what? I'm saying that God's going to bring breakthrough to our country. That I'm betting on the church coming back. I'm betting on favor coming into your life. Somebody ought to shout amen. I'm betting that God's about to do what he said he's going to do. And over the next five years, you're going to say grace and favor, opportunity and breakthrough. But if you're so mad, you're striking everybody because you're masked up, breathing your, uh, uh, breathing, breathing, breathing in your own carbon dioxide. <sighs> Got lung problems, people dying. <laughs> You're looking at the wrong stuff. That's why on Facebook you need to be sharing like crazy and you need to download the app because if you like this kind of material, 
honey, there's more where this came from. We're not just going with, with McRibs. We're going to Chick-fil-A. Come on, somebody. Let me We're going to do some hot apple pie. Come on, let's give God some praise for Krispy Kreme. Can I get an amen right now? We're going to have fun. Everybody shout, we're going to have fun. Second Corinthians 4. Let's go. Y'all are listening slow. We got to hurry up here. Second Corinthians 4 says, Therefore, since we do hold and engage in this ministry by the mercy of God, granting us favor, benefits, opportunities, and especially salvation. How many of y'all glad you're saved? We do not get discouraged. This is the Amplified Bible. It has more words. It's a woman's Bible. Come on. It says, spiritless and despondent with, there's his, there's his cousin, fear, or become faint with weariness. I'm just exhausted. I need a vacation. I'm exhausted. So you go away, but you take your phone with you and you're like, my God, did you see what they did? And everybody's sending you 19,000 emails of all this. And now just like, I went away, but I still think I need a vacation. I'm just exhausted. If you don't take a break, you will break. I'm going to say it again. You ought to, somebody ought to Instagram that with a real cool meme of me standing beside this phone right now. And put a skinny filter on it. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Hashtag, if you don't take a break, you're going to break. God knew you couldn't carry all this, that, that it, you were going to get discouraged and, and overcome with uh, spirit uh, of despondency and fear and become faint, weary, and exhausted. I read the scripture. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This wasn't in my notes, but he just gave it to me. And I want to say it before I forget it and start talking about food again. <laughs> but he said this. One, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Then he said, you labor to enter into rest. Some of you are so tired. <sighs> you, even your breathing is laborious. <sighs> I just, what? You're not really calming yourself. Weeping may endure for night, but joy comes in the morning. So at nighttime, see if this makes sense with you. Say amen on Facebook and talk to me if this is true. Have you ever been okay in the light of day, but then when everybody else went to sleep and you were alone, all of a sudden your ears started ringing and things started going through your mind. And the next thing, you were overwhelmed. It won't be everybody, but some people have been under pressure for a long time. I've actually had to sit up in bed just to breathe. Anybody. It won't be everybody. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Let the rest of you losers never worry about it. <laughs> some people are more prone to worry, okay? It's great if you don't worry. And then some people are so worried that anybody would judge them for worrying that they're worried so they won't raise their hand. But I got a feeling professionally that there's more of us that have a problem. And some of you have a bigger problem than other people. Got a problem. So you're overwhelmed. So you set up. Why you set Because you got to get your mind back. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Keep your mind stayed upon the Lord. You got to renew your mind. So you got to tell your mind, the mind you shut up, you calm down. You can't solve all these problems in the middle of the night. Here's what you're trying to do. The enemy and the inner me is trying to exhaust me and get me tired. So when I wake up in the morning, I start striking stuff instead of resting. So you know what I'm going to do? If Lord, you never sleep and never slumber, you watch me while I sleep and I'm going to sleep. And God, also, please keep Nicole from, Nicole from snoring so loud that she wakes me up. God, just give me five minutes. Come on, somebody else. Right Actually, I got confused. That, that's Nicole's prayer for me. But you've got to control your mind. You're supposed to sleep at night. He says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. Everybody shout that. Shout, I have sweet sleep. I sleep. Say, I need to sleep because I need beauty sleep. I need to be so pretty. I have to listen to tapes. I have to listen to tapes. <laughs> it's really tapes. He listens to tapes. <laughs> About pride. I'm going to be over, overcome with pride. You need it. Some of you wake up just exhausted, spiritless, and weary because you're not controlling your mind. But next, 414, 2 Corinthians 4.14 says, Assured that he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also, with Jesus, bring us along with you into his presence. 
For all these things are taking place for your sake so that more and more grace, divine favor, spiritual blessing extended more and more to people multiple times. It's going to just happen to you with thanksgiving and, and, and much increase will give glory to God. Verse 16 says, therefore, we do not become discouraged. Utterly spiritless, exhausted, weary through fear. Though our outer man is perishing and decaying and washing away. This is why we need Botox. Can I get amen? <laughs> People never really responded to our church for some reason about like Botox or facial work. But they love looking at Joel, Joyce, and Jake's. <laughs> we won't go there. Your outward man is perishing day by day, decaying, wasting away. Yet your inner self is being progressively renewed day after day. So on a Tuesday night, you say, I'm getting renewed. I'm being renewed day by day. I'm getting younger by what I say. I am happy and I got it made. I'm being renewed. Just make up songs. I'm not discouraged. I am glad. I'm driving to McDonald's because I'm going to get me a rib. <laughs> I know the last part didn't rhyme, but I'm still believing God to bring the McRib back. So why are you being silly? Because you need it. Some of y'all walked in here like, you know, it's 17 feet of snow outside, 27 degrees. I'm outside right now next to my barbecue pit in Dallas, Texas, listening to you on a little, you know, generator. It's just horrible. Well, I can't help but you move to Texas where it's 19,000 degrees in the summer and 27 degrees in the winter. That wasn't a good idea. You need to move to Florida and you don't move because of a job. You move because of a church. Come on, somebody. Work online. Work from home. Come home. Come on, prodigal. That's where God lives. You know he does. Talked to him today. I was walking on the beach and he was talking to me. He just right there. I didn't mean it. I didn't say that, they did. I was saying all kinds of it. Verse 15, verse 16. Let's go for 17. <laughs> Forgot where I was there for a minute. I started having too much fun. Check out how God says through Paul, just don't make this a big deal. He said, for your light momentary affliction. What do you mean? I got cancer. For your light momentary affliction. Oh, my wife left me. This is the third woman I've tried to be with. <laughs> I'm thinking of a story right now I won't tell, but something happened to me yesterday. It's like, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, you're not, when you're 19, been married four times, something wrong with you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Y'all need to go to premarital counseling. feel like there's uh, a lot of people that got nine, there were 19 that got married three times apparently. So he says, your light momentary affliction. Doesn't that sound like when, when David went up against Goliath? He looked really big, but he didn't say, you're the biggest guy I've ever seen in my life. I've never faced anybody like you in all my life. God's no wonder you've never attacked this guy. This guy is huge. Oh my God. That only makes the enemy go, yeah, yeah. But if you look at him, and you're hearing, he's huge, but you go, what's up, Tiny? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got something for you. Today, I'm going to feed. See what he's doing? He's belittling the problem, uplifting the promise. Oh, this cancer, you little cancer, I'll whip you. Cancer is just but a name, and I have a name that has been given to me. It is a name that is above every name. Cancer, you have no right to live in my body. I'm going to go to bed tonight knowing I'm healed. With long life, he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. Psalms 107, 20 says, he sent his word, and it healed me and delivered me from all of my destruction. I decree and declare, cancer, you have no right to live in my body. You stop it. Come on, give God praise today. See how that works? That's how that works. Y'all be seated. Florida stood up and started clapping because they want to go home. I know their tricks. I ain't going to wrap it up. Not yet. We're almost done. For our light momentary affliction, slight distress, passing of this passing hour is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us <clears throat> an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessively surpassing 
comparison in all calculations and a vast transistent glory of the blessedness that'll never cease. Verse 18. So since we consider and look not, look not to those things that are seen, but those things that are unseen, invisible, temporal, brief and fleeting. Look at your problem tomorrow and say, you are brief and fleeting. Look at that guy living in your basement that won't leave and say, you're brief and fleeting. Look at your teenagers that's been giving you 17 kind of trouble and look at them and say, you're brief and fleeting. fleeting. <laughs> Whatever it is, since we consider not, we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen for the things that are visible are temporal, brief and fleeting. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. What we're really working on here, listen to me as I close. We're we're dealing with eternal stuff. Eternal salvation. An ever eternal blessed glory. A a city where the lamb is the light. Where there cometh no night. We're, We're talking about when we get to heaven and we're all around the throne of God. And we're saying, I see the Lord. Oh, I see the Lord. He is high and lifted up. And more revelation comes. Oh, God. And his train filled. And the angels cry. Oh, angels cry. Holy. Every time they cry that, they're seeing something new. Oh, God, you're greater than I thought. Oh, and the angels. Oh, I didn't even know you were that. Oh, the angels cry. Holy is the Lord. In heaven, there are people there right now doing what we're going to get to do. We're in training down here, reigning in a kingdom for our king to get as many people saved. Bring them to church. Somebody ought to have we don't invite people to church we bring them to church and that's why we bring our tithe that's why we give our offering because we are not in this system we are in that system so that's why it has nothing to do with me can't see it from my house Texas one of our assistants she lives in Texas she was sending us pictures last night they were uh, making their dinner on a fire like they were Native Americans. That's old school, y'all. Little kid all rosy-cheeked out there trying to cook a hot pocket. (laughs) 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 And I felt sorry for him, except I've told Patricia, moved to Florida for years. So I looked at her and I thought, her little kid, (laughs) mama, why don't you listen to PD? Because we had electricity. Our wind chime thingies, turbines, they ain't going to freeze. They might get some sand on them, but we'll power wash them off. <laughs> My point is, is it didn't, I saw it and I felt sad for them, but I provided an escape. <laughs> Y'all ain't even hear what I'm saying right now. I said, you can work here like you can work there. But for some reason, they want that. So tonight, they were probably out there again. (laughs) Mama, can we move to Florida now? (laughs) Looks like little Jeep's kid's kind of lonely anyway. He had a sad look on his face when he talked about you. Why do I make jokes about that? I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture for you. That if you could see, like that didn't affect you last night. How many of y'all made your food inside? How many of y'all had electricity? How many of y'all slept on a bed, in a bed? Raise your hand if you, if you agree with what I'm saying right now. How many of y'all got indoor plumbing? Let me see your hand right now. Okay, okay. so we can see what happened to them. It wasn't really affecting our life. You have to get a revelation that what is happening around you with this system ain't got nothing to do with you. I can't help it that's happened. I didn't say it was kill babies. I didn't do that. It had nothing to do. It ain't got nothing to do with us because we come from a kingdom where our father is a king. So you need to start expecting what other people at our church are expecting. We got two kinds of people as I close at our church. This is so rough, but I'm usually so politically correct. And you got smart people. feel the Holy Spirit telling me, and not smart people. (laughs) That ain't bad. Come on, son. That ain't too bad. You got smart people and not so smart people. 
And the smart people in our church, they know that they've got seed in the ground. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. And they're getting not just million dollar deals, mega million dollar deals. Unbelievable things. One guy told me today about an offer that was made to him that was $4 million higher a month ago, and, and now it's $4 million less. And he's still going, I don't know what I want. It's just opportunity after opportunity. So you got smart people, and you got not so smart people. Well, I don't know, man. You know, with everything that's going on in the world, I'm going to take my money. The fastest way to save my money is, is to double it up and put it back in my pocket. <laughs> it's the fastest way I can do with my money. No. Money is called currency because it's supposed to flow. So, it, you know, it's supposed to have current. But if you're hanging on to this, I'm just going to see what's going to happen. Well, I can tell you what's going to happen already. You're going to trust in this instead of trusting in God. And all the investors in the kingdom and the people that keep saying, we're going to make big, bold moves. We're going to move on. We're not going to allow what is happening to discourage us. And we're certainly not going to go back to the old system and strike the rock. Don't know what's going to happen. And then one year we're up and gold's the answer. Silver's the answer now. Stocks are the answer now. Now Bitcoin is the answer now. Oh my gosh, I don't know what the answer is. The answer has always been what it has always been that God said, I will never have the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging for bread. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The answer is the same where he said, I will rebuke the devourer for the sake of God's people who say the first 10% belongs to God and I will not touch what is God's. Come on, give God praise today. Don't be like them. Don't, don't be out there shaking. Oh, it's cold. Come inside. Come inside. Come inside where the favor's out. Come inside where the anointing's out. Come inside where the joy's out. Come inside where the consistency's out. The faithful man shall abound in blessing. It's not time to back down. It's time to fire up and bet on God. Bet on Jesus. Bet on his church. I promise you, it's a safe bet. Give God praise today. Come on. Stay standing with me. It'll encourage me to shut up. <laughs> Raise your hand if you feel pretty encouraged about this point. Come on, sunset all over. Say amen to this. On Facebook, say amen to this. What you're going to do is you're going to confuse the muscle. I don't work out a lot, but I, I, I do try to work out a little bit every day. And... Uh, when I work out with Don Strange, he's got a perfect name because Don is very strange. Don is actually a brilliant, probably the smartest guy I know in the health world. He's just really smart. Makes me mad because he's so muscular and smart. But he's always, when we're working out together, he's always saying, hey, if you keep doing exactly the same thing you always do, you don't confuse the muscle. So the muscle, you need to trick it. And I want you to trick your brain a little bit. Because if you're always going into the rut of, I'm never going to have enough. I'm on a fixed income. Every time little people would tell my dad that growing up, little old ladies would tell him, I'm on a fixed income. And he'd say, who fixed it? I'm fixing. This is a guy that was broke as a joke and sewed a dollar a day into a ministry every single day of his life. And then $2 a day, $5 a day, he unfixed it. And he broke the cycle of debt, lack, defeat, anxiety over my family's life. And I'm grateful. Thanks, Dad. I'm super grateful for my daddy. So tonight, as we wrap this up, I want you just to think about for a minute. What if, really go with me on this. What were you supposed to be doing that you're not doing anymore? The question is, what are you supposed to be doing that you're not doing anymore? Well, I got scared, so I stopped going to church because after all, I might get the COVID. So, but I still need to go to the grocery store and touch the screen that nobody cleaned up and grab the rail. At least here we spray the heck out of everything. Spend a million dollars a month on bleach, bleaching the crap out of these places. Right? 
It's the safest place in the world. So like, okay, so what, maybe it was church attendance for some of you. Maybe others of you was like, well, you know what? I don't know what's happening with the current administration. So wonder what this world system. So now I've stopped tithing. So now I wonder why my business just dried up. I had a guy a, a few years ago. He was at church here in Florida today. He's from St. Louis. And um, a few years ago, he came to me and said, man, your team's got to get better about telling me when we're not tithing. He said, you know, we're on the automated giving. And he said, it just came out all the time. And like for six months, our business has been tanking and I couldn't figure out why. And then come to find out we haven't tithed in six months. Your team needs to call me and tell me when our credit card gets jacked around. And I was like, well, that's really not our responsibility and I really can't make that happen, but it's unfortunate that you found yourself in this predicament. So he said, what should I do? I said, I would ask God to forgive you and start over right now. So he said, do I have to go back and pay back the last six months? That I, I said, that's between you and God. If you got it, do it. But if you don't, go on. Admit it, quit it, and forget it. It's like when you eat too many McRibs, you go, God, I'm sorry. Help my indigestion. I apologize. I won't do it again. Anybody helping me? Uh, so what he did is he said, I'm going to make it right now. Fix it. Move forward. God is my witness. Within two weeks, he came back to me and said, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe it. All of a sudden, it's like our our offices blew up. We started getting calls like never before, and it just went crazy. And I said, I would keep an eye on your credit card. Because here's what happens. If God just continues to bless us, and we never do our end of the bargain, He's raised a bunch of kids that are spoiled. We would be, what do they call that when they're rich? Trust fund babies. So God wants you to operate by the rules. So the the question is, one more time, what were you doing pre-COVID, mid-COVID, after COVID, still in COVID? What were you doing that you're not doing anymore? What's the thing? I want every head bowed and every eye closed. We're going to drill on this just for a minute because I don't, want to, I don't want you to find yourself in the spot that that guy was in where it was like, well, I stopped dreaming. We stopped giving. We stopped tithing. We stopped being obedient. Now, that's why there's such a spirit of discouragement on you because your faith has been deactivated and discouragement, all that means is you're disengaged from courage. Your courage is gone. Your life is gone. Your vitality is gone. That, that, that thing that's got a hold of you like the, the David's men at the cave of Abdullam, they were discouraged and quieted and, and, and depleted. And he looked at them and said, you're not losers. You're mighty men of valor. And I speak to you tonight. That you're mighty men and women of valor. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to ask yourself the question, hear it at home. What is it that you're supposed to be doing that you're not doing? Ask yourself that. God, I ask you to speak to your people. Tug on their heart. God, we're sorry for the disobedience. We're sorry for the anger. We're sorry for not trusting you. We're sorry for stealing the time. We're sorry for not offering you the offering. We're God, we're sorry for having a lack of faith and disobedience. We're, we're going full-fledged into 2021, and we'll look back and say we won in 21 because we were bold, we were courageous, we were obedient. I'll break the spirit of discouragement and fear right now. You're going to sleep well tonight. No anxiety. No panic attacks. Sweet, sweet sleep. You're going to sleep so good if you don't have your alarm set, you're just going to sleep through it. Be late to work tomorrow. You're just supernatural sleep is coming over you. I call you blessed. I call you favored. I call you anointed. I call you equipped. I call you happy. I call you glad. I call you free. I call you joyful. I call you peaceful. I call you supernaturally charged with the Holy Ghost. I call you filled. I call you smiling. I call you having a quick ear. I call you quick to obey, quick to repent. I call you evangelistic. I call you generous. I call you blessed and favored by Almighty God.